the transformation of existential bioenergy is most simple yet found to be very difficult because we have always considered this existential bioenergy as taboo. Many problems arise. On a day-to-day -day basis, I am plundered with questions and problems that young people are facing and it is in response to some of those questions of a mother I speak to you about worry not the way to care. Normally we think that by worrying we can take care of the circumstances, situations and people. It is erroneous. When a mother becomes too much concerned about the child, it means she is trying to find in the child, the child and the husband both. When a mother becomes too much concerned about the child, his welfare, his health and many things, it means she is trying to find in the child, the child and the husband both that is dangerous. You should start looking for a friend that will divert your mind from him and it will save him as well. Always remember that the greatest discovery of this century is that almost 99% of people who suffer from neurosis, psychosis or some kind of mind disease suffer from their mothers. This is one of the greatest discovery of this century that deep down it always it is the mother. So do not do that to your child. It has been done to millions of people and it is being done everywhere. By the time one attains to the age of 42, the existential bioenergy should have transcended. However, in most of the cases, this rarely happens. The energy that should have begun its upward movement gets stuck. The energy that should have begun its upward movement gets stuck and its upward journey becomes impossible. The energy continues to move downwards. Unfulfillment of this existential bioenergy explodes in many ways as insecurity, anger, distrust, jealousy and so on. Both male and female respond to this condition differently and this difference is related to biological makeup and conditionings. In case of a female being, her sexual desires and instincts are internal. In case of man, it is external. It is easy for man to get over these situations than a woman. After the age of 42, each woman leans towards her son. In her son, she seeks her husband, lover, along with her son. The present question relates to such a situation. She becomes extremely worried about the welfare of her son. She becomes extremely she becomes extremely worried about the welfare of her son. The child continues to grow under the shadow of her worries. Worry is destructive. What is the way? Worry will lead you to nowhere. Like anyone else, you consider that by worrying, you will get the solution. When you worry about someone or something, always remember the problem is more with you than with the situation or the person. You think that you are worrying about your son, child or situation and by doing this you are doing a great thing. No, when you worry about someone or something, always remember the problem is more with you than with the situation or the person. The other will seem to be perfectly okay. You seem to be too much worried about him 
or the situation. Sometimes even that can create tension in his mind if you are too much worried. Take every care, but worry can never become care. And this is what usually we consider the care. Certainly you love the person and you have to take care. But worry is not the way to take care. Worry is destructive. It is destructive to you and to the other person as well. Remember if he finds out that you are too worried about him. Remember if he finds that you are too worried about him. He will start feeling guilty. That it is because of him that you are too worried. You are postponing your schedules. This may cause many problems to that person and about his health as well. This is like punishing himself. That is what my feeling is right now, that you are too much concerned. No concern is bad, but too much concern is also bad. Extremes are always bad. It is good to be in the middle. You are overprotecting him and this is the problem. You are too much of a Jewish mother. You can make him almost feel suffocated. That is what bronchitis and asthma is when you are too much suffocated. Asthma can start if a person feels that he is being suffocated and that is what you are creating. And you are not against him, you are for him and it is for his own good that you are doing all these things. But there is no understanding in you, there is no training. Your ways and means are primitive. Your intention is not bad. I do not suspect your intentions. But what you are doing is not good. Your intention is perfectly valid. But the way you are doing it, it will be suicidal for you both. Because the more you will be concerned, the more he will feel suffocated and then you will become more concerned. Just leave him on his own. A mother has expressed her desire about her son, son's welfare, that she is concerned about his health, his education and his life. So in response to that, I have to speak and this is in response to that. Just leave him on his own, love him but leave him. He has his own life, give him your love but not the mind. Just give him more freedom and all ailments will disappear. Allow him his own way of life and never try to guide him too much. All that we can do is we can love and give freedom. And when love gives freedom, only then it is love. So withdraw your concern and your worries too. That may be some way of avoiding yourself. Normally each mother becomes concerned about her son so you can avoid your own worries. That becomes a good excuse and rationalization too. You can escape from your own inner chaos. You can become concerned about him. That is what millions of people are doing. Children become scapegoats. You can put all your problems on him. And you feel very good because you are concerned about the child. This is natural. And nobody can say that you are doing something wrong. People will tell you that you are a great mother. You are so caring. And all that you are doing is avoiding certain problems in your own life. And if you are left alone, if there is nobody to worry about, then you will have to encounter those problems. Encounter those problems. They have to be transcended and never make a problem out of it, otherwise he will become a problem. And if you in deep way have some investment in his being ill, 
in his being trouble this is an investment because if he is perfectly healthy then what will you do you will be thrown back to yourself so deep down somewhere in the unconscious you would like him to remain the way he is and he will feel it children are very intuitive he will feel it and he can and he will fulfill your desires what else can he do he will fulfill your unconscious desires and he will keep you engaged but his life will be spoiled and this is what happens with most of the mothers after the age of 42 and the existential bioenergy has not transcended the mother naturally leans towards the youngest child because when the first child is born the energy is moving upward it is heading towards the peak but somewhere before it reaches the peak because of our tabooed nature the problem begins to crop up and then by the time the age of 42 comes you should have been totally free from the from these situations you should have been hill at the hill top and your descent should start but it does not happen so by the time the last child starts growing your and you have not reached the hill top the energy is waning the descent has a start so naturally every mother leans towards the child and when you look into the last child the youngest one grows under mother's shadow and he is always spoiled always in most of the cases it always happens when i look at the situations around this is what i find so you deep down somewhere in the unconscious you would like him to remain the way he is and he will feel it children are very intuitive he will feel it and he will fulfill your desire what else can he do he will fulfill your unconscious desire and he will keep you engaged but his life will be spoiled and you will miss an opportunity of encountering yourself my feeling is that you have some deep problems to solve and that problems relate to your love so rather than pouring everything onto him find a lover friend and try to sort out your problems it happens many times that a mother can hang around the child because he has failed in love because it happens many times that a mother can hang around the child because she has failed in love love has not yet blossomed and now the life energy is waning and there is no possibility of experiencing love you can experience love only when you transcend beyond the biology it is the existential bioenergy as sex that you have to transcend to attain to love in the absence this is what happens as you are all that a woman can say what can i do i have no time to move into any relationship i cannot afford it no you have to move into your own life so that you can leave him a little alone give him his own space i think he is perfectly okay there is no need to be worried at all the worry is not going to help it can simply harm and once he feels that you are giving him freedom you will see him flowering but it is a hard decision you think that by giving him freedom he will go astray but do you want to go with your understanding or with the understanding of the wise it never happens that freedom spoils the people once you give him the freedom you will see him flowering what you really desire will happen but you have chosen a wrong way of having it and nothing will be lost just to start giving him more and more freedom not complete freedom a little more 
it is just like a goat you have tied for grazing and you lengthen the rope that you have tied the goat with so that she can find a little more space little more distance to move around to graze so this is where you are giving him a little more freedom little more freedom this is very intuitive what kind of freedom should be given to a 5 year old child 10 year old child to an adolescent this all depends on your understanding and intelligence you should not try to patronize a child help but do not try to patronize him support do not guide give him all that you can give but that is all do not make any conditions on him which he has to return or he has to repay you in some way do not make him feel obliged that you are doing and do not do anything that can create guilt in him so he starts feeling that it is because of him that his mother is so worried otherwise he will start thinking that it will be better to die the mother will be happy and this is what creates many ailments the child begins to because the desire to die desire not to live is there and your continuous wrong caring methods create that feeling that he is the cause of the problem for his mother it is better that he may die and then all the problems of his mother will solve not exactly in these words but existentially this happens in, to almost all the children not exactly in these words but existentially this happens to almost all the children they simply start shrinking because they see that because of them there is so much trouble and so many problems so that so what is the point of being here and they start shrinking they can die slowly and slowly and you can see the difference between the eldest child and the youngest child the gap of the age may be very small but the gap intuitively the gap of intelligence is very wide between these two children so first give him freedom never suffocate him that is what his mental or any other ailments are saying to you it is a message but you are not able to understand it but this you cannot understand therefore do not and force food on him otherwise he will reject there is no need a child knows when he is hungry when he is hungry he will eat if he is not hungry there is no need to eat and it is such a natural thing that no child is going to remain hungry and therefore just stop worrying about it this is very important because when you are growing and one day you aspire to be parents but you have no training how to be parents how to rear a child you have a legacy that your father bring up brought you up in a particular way and every child have very unpleasant memories of his childhood or youth and it is said that they had the hard time so in that series it is my effort to speak to you about the problems that arises if some day he misses one meal do not be worried that is perfectly okay once in a while a holiday is good let him miss the meal when his real hunger comes he will come running but never force many mothers force food on the child they want the child to eat this and that many times i have to tell my mother that i will eat all that i can eat and what is good for me this is how every infant is you put the 
large number of dishes in front of an infant, the infant will pick up only a few dishes, not that he will eat everything. And whatever he picks up will be beneficial for his health. And if the infant is sick and the food is put in front of him, psychologists say that he will pick up only that food which is beneficial to his health and the physical condition at that time and he will reject everything else. But the mother continues to force the things on him. The child is hungry, child is crying, wants the milk. But the mother feels that it is not the right time to give the milk to the child. And the milk has to be given every two hours. The child cries and goes to sleep. And then when the child is sleeping, somehow he got gone to sleep. You wake him up because it is the time to give the child a feed. It should be natural. You should understand the cry of the child. When the child is hungry, the child's cry is different. You should be able to understand that and intuitively know that the child is hungry now. Child should be given the feed. Many mothers force food on the ch child and destroy many things in doing that. And what happens, whatever we enforce on the infant that continues throughout the life and that gives a very unpleasant and unhealthy upbringing of the child. Once they destroy the natural appetite of the child, by and by he becomes completely oblivious. When he is hungry, when he is not hungry, he knows not. No animal starves. When the animal is hungry, he will eat. And when he is not hungry, he will not eat. And no mother is taking care of him. Nobody is guiding him. And children are animals, pure animals. Allow them their way. Just leave him. If he is not eating, that is good for him. If he is eating, that is good for him. Just watch. You need not be worried about it. And within a month he will start eating in his own way. Whatsoever he likes, let him eat. But never impose anything on him. Keep your plans and your knowledge of how a child has to be brought up to yourself. And if you have any guidebooks, burn them. Because in the West people have guidebooks. They are reading books and trying to follow what the knowledgeable people, experts say should be done. There is no need at all. Nature is enough. And give him freedom. Let him move. Let him do things on his own. Within three months your problem will disappear. That much I can assure you. Instead of solving his problems, tackle your own problem. When a mother becomes too much concerned about the child, it means she is trying to find in the child, the child and her, and her husband both. That is dangerous. You should start looking for a friend that will divert your mind from him and it will save him. Always remember that the greatest discovery of this century is that almost 99% of the people who suffer from neurosis, psychosis and some other kind of mind disease suffer from mothers. This is one of the greatest discoveries of this century that deep down it is always the mother. So do not do that to your child. It has been done to millions of people. It is being done almost everywhere on a day-to-day -day basis. You can go to a psychoanalyst and ask what is the root cause of psychological disease and he will say the mother. I emphasize it emphatically. You can go to any psychoanalyst and ask what is the root cause of psychological disease and he will say the mother. The beauty and the paradox of it is that no mother wants to harm the child. Every mother wants to help. Every mother wants to sacrifice her whole life for the child. 
every mother is martyr and yet still this is the result so something is going wrong intentions are good but the methods used are wrong remember this paragraph you can go to any psychologist and ask what is the root cause of the psychological disease and he will say the mother the beauty and the paradox of it that no mother wants to harm the child every mother wants to help every mother wants to sacrifice her whole life for the child every mother wants to go as martyr and still this is the result so something is definitely going wrong intentions are good but the methods used are not good this you have to understand allow a little more freedom every day every week give him a little more freedom just as when you want the child to learn how to use the money you give him a one coin and see how he spends the money next day you give him another coin and so on and so forth you are training him how to manage the money and his resources so to this is what means i mean by freedom you are giving him freedom bit by bit as he grows into consciousness you give him a little more freedom and by the time he attains the maturity he'll be mature enough to make his own decisions and that is what the ways of the masters are that is indeed the ways of the master the ways of the people who understand the ways of buddhas